And we're back with NFL Network's own Lindsey Rose. And Lindsey, I got to ask you, we're sitting in front of the Raiders backdrop here. Yes. The Las Vegas Raiders. Is that going to, as a broadcaster, it's gonna is, be that weird. Gonna, is it going to be hard to get totally. used to? Totally. I still call the Chargers San Diego on the reg. So, yes, it will probably be about three years before I get Las Vegas <laughs> down. We have a, we have, it's kind of a funny internal thing. So, uh, on everywhere, people call Derek David Carr. Oh, uh, Mm, me too. Listen, included. we've all we've all yeah. done it, but every time that we hear someone do it, or one of us does it, oh yeah, we put a dollar in the jar. <laughs> okay. And so I feel like Ooh. now we're gonna have to have an every time you call us the Oakland Raiders, or you don't say the oh. Las Vegas Raiders, you gotta put a dollar in the jar. No, see now you're cutting into my pocketbook. I don't <laughs> like this idea, <laughs> and I also don't like the you. David Derrick because I I would lose money that way too. I've what? done that several times on the air. What, what is the one that gets you hung up the most? Is it the San Diego one still? I know San Diego, the San Diego yeah, yeah. for us is yeah. still really, really hard to, yeah, to break that habit. Well, the, thing, the problem with that, too, is that there's two Los Angeles teams. So not only does it feel weird to say Los Angeles Chargers because just we're trained to say San Diego Chargers, but, like, the L.A., you can't just say L.A., because then that's something it's, that needs specifying. Yeah. It's just – I wish the league had checked with me before they did this because, you know, I feel like it's very hard for a broadcaster. I'm just kidding, obviously. But, um, yeah, so we'll get used to Las Vegas. It'll come in time. It'll come. In time. It, it is going to be cool, though, just the optics of it and the new market. It's all fresh. Yeah. It's very exciting. We've talked about it a lot, obviously, in the past couple of weeks, but in the past 48 hours especially, about how it's going to be such a fresh start for this team, this organization, yeah. in a brand-new stadium, top-of-the-line yeah. Everything. It's going to be pretty exciting for yeah, us. Yeah, with a draft kickoff. Yes. How about the draft stuff? That looks fun. I know. It is going to be. It is going to be something. Are you going to be in Vegas for the draft? Or are you going to be in the studio? I. Or are we too far out from that? I'm typically in studio. So okay. my guess is that I'll be in studio. That's good. Because that's always been the case in, in the past. Yeah, I'll make my pitch. I mean <laughs> like, I think you guys need me there. The Ra- I know the Raiders have two first-round picks. There's a lot going on. Oh There's gosh. so much excitement in the first round this year. Yes. I think you should go. You, thank you very much. I, who, you okay, let me know I'm who just, I, I mean, need to email. Can I get email. a copy of this tape? I'm going to send it to my we boss. Will. The Raiders want me there. I think that's what I just heard, right? Yeah. Like, you speak for Mayock. I, <laughs> and <laughs> I've done no 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 Mike <laughs> Mike I know that you listen to this show every week. I'm not doing that, but I am saying. We should get you the He draft. better be listening to it now because <laughs> I'm on it. Oh, he will. He will. Okay. And if I don't hear back about the things that I said, Mike Mayock, then we're fighting. Oof. Speaking of Mike, heck of a year. Heck of a Such start for a Double great M. Year. Heck so, of a start. So excited for him. It sounds stupid to say proud of him, but like, you know, as some, I worked with him for a long time at NFL Network. Huge fan of him at NFL Network. Like, he's just, I'm so glad that he's doing this and that everybody's getting a chance to see what he can do and that he's crushing it because you never know how something's going to translate, you know. It, but but with him, he's always been such a, he's always been such a tape guy. And, like, we would try to get him to do TV stuff and he would roll his eyes and be like, you're asking me, I can't even do a Mayock. Okay, never mind. I'm not going to try to do that. <laughs> I would but love to hear no, the Mayock impersonation. It's, I started with it and then realized <laughs> I can't do that. Um, but he's got such a strong Philly accent. I'll tell you what, the one is Eric Burry. Eric Burry. Well, f- Eric Burry. Oh, Eric. Yeah, I translated <laughs> for you. Will forever be Eric Burry to me because that's what Mike Mayock called okay. him uh, right out of the gate. But anyway, he is. Uh, he was just that guy who, like, any of the fluff that sometimes is necessary for TV, you're like, okay, you know, the quarterbacks move the needle. And he'd be like, I do not want to talk about a quarterback again. Like, I want to talk to you about the offensive guard out of whatever school. And you're just like, who played, okay. Who played six months of college football, but he loves the team. Totally. He loves that first step. Yes. But but <laughs> I love that. Like, yeah. So I'm a nerd, right? I want all of that. Like, that, I'm that viewer that wants – I want you to tell me about the guy that I don't know about. I want you to tell me where you uh, – all of it. Um, sometimes, you know, TV producers don't feel that way. They're like, let's go another round on Burrow. Yeah. <laughs> and how about Tua? And so, you know, sometimes you just kind of go, okay, Mike, we're going to do two questions about quarterbacks. And then you throw in a random guy that nobody knows that you're excited about. But I'm the person that would eat up the that random you're guy. I'm for like, you're like, all right, that's yes. cool. Yeah, yeah, I know about the quarterback. Let's so the get whole, to like, the- his draft last year, my, uh, everyone was freaking out about the number four pick, right? Mm-hmm. And I was like, if he was sitting at the desk and he was the draft analyst and he'd been telling us for months how much he loved him, then we would all be like, that's a great pick. Yay. They got who they wanted. You know what yeah. I mean? It's just so weird. He's, 
he's good. He he gets it. Yeah. And he's always been one of those people in the league too where like I've gone around with him to pro days and stuff and the hardcore football people the GMs and the people who just live and breathe football, they have always been Mike's people. Like, they love him. And so you always knew that the things that he was saying, they're not fluffy things. They're not just like, oh, I'm hearing whatever. It's like the good football people, the Bill Belichick type people in the world, they think like him. Which is a good I thing for us. I think he's going to be good for you guys. I know, and he really hit it out of the park. I mean, you look, we're here on Radio Row, but a big person, big portion of the reason why we're here, we have two guys up for NFL honors tomorrow. We mm. got Josh Jacobs, mm-hmm. Rookie of the Year, mm-hmm. Max Crosby, Rookie of the Year. Yep. And that is, that's a pretty good way for him and Coach Gruden to start off year one together. Two guys so, up for Rookie of the Year. So James Jones on Total Access last night made a pitch for Max Crosby. He said he thinks that he should be the defensive Rookie of the Year over Nick Bosa and went into all the reasons why and made a really strong argument about what he's done and how he doesn't have the guys around him at the moment um, that Nick Bosa, like Nick Bosa is surrounded by people. Yeah, he's, we got, all he's, know got, he's got dudes from left to right. That like it doesn't take anything away from what he does. Nick Bosa is obviously awesome, okay? But you are allowed to do what you do and just like unleash it when the guy next to you is doing his job. And the guy next to the, hit, you on the other side is doing his job. Like, it just elevates the whole thing. So, uh, not to say that, uh, but the Raiders are still building. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, especially on the defensive yeah, I mean, side of the ball, there's and, more to do. You look at do. seven and nine. There's still work to be done. So, there's an argument about what Max Crosby did and that he did it without five first-rounders yeah. around him on the on the defensive line. I think I uh, he kind of opened my eyes a little bit to, I mean, I knew Max Crosby had a great season, but I think. James Jones made some really strong arguments for him. That said, I don't think he, and I don't want to, I think Nick Bosa, just the whole, like, the groundswell, I think Nick Bosa's going to take home the award, but I think that Max Crosby is a star. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, look at Josh, too. And we were looking at Josh's numbers like an hour ago. Impressive, and then even more impressive when you realize he missed three games. It's insane. And not only did he miss three games, he had a bum shoulder for yeah. 50% of the season. Yeah. And he was still going out there and competing and getting better and better week after week. And if I had a vote, I would vote for Josh for Offensive Rookie of the Year. We do need to get you to Vegas. For sure. We do need to get you to Vegas. <laughs> well, I mean, but that's not even like a, no, a bias thing or anything like that. Josh Jacobs was really good I mean what you guys had from a wide receiver standpoint this year after all the Antonio Browns you know they tried to make moves but like there there wasn't that guy without that like really strong wide receiving core that could stretch the field and like you you could stack the box against Josh it didn't matter he was still doing what he did he's he's a stud so I'm I'm really excited about Josh Jacobs' future, and I think that what he did out of the gate changed your fortunes dramatically. I thought you won games this year because you had Josh Jacobs, yeah. and then the offensive line too. Absolutely. You know, it's funny he's talking about James again because James also said essentially what you did. He goes, mm-hmm. "This when you're a defensive coordinator, you come into the game and you say I have to stop Josh yeah, Jacobs.' That was it. And he didn't. It didn't matter. People yep. still they tried. They did whatever they could, and off he ran. Yeah. And A.J. Brown was a stud, and yeah, he's, exactly. he's another guy that you're going to talk about in away from him Kyler all. Murray. But I think I, – I just, I just think it's obvious. For me, it's Josh Jacobs as the I, offensive rookie of the year. Look, I hope so. I'm, I'm thinking the same thing, sending the same vibes that you are. But I'm curious for, for you, what does your Super Bowl Sunday look like? Like uh, personally yeah. or, or – like, like this Sunday. Like. So this Sunday I will be going to the airport and flying home. Oh, okay. Yeah, I know. It's not the answer you were expecting. It huh? was not. That threw me <laughs> off a little bit <laughs> as you see me stutter and now I try know. to figure out what yeah. to do. No, um, so I do NFL Total Access on Monday from the studio in Los Angeles. So I'm flying back on Sunday, and I will watch the game from my couch like everybody else in America at a party or whatever. But NFL Network will be on the air for, I think we're doing like eight live hours for uh, game day morning, and uh, and then there will be a – game day prime and after the game and so pretty much before after all of it if you're into super bowl coverage go ahead and turn on nfl network have it on in the background while you pre-party party and post party obviously tons of information to get you set for the game yes that sounds great Lindsay rose thank you so much this was a blast we'll see you in Vegas. we're gonna get you to the draft party i'm thank gonna you. have mike make some calls yes we're I gonna do it all oh hang on you, what is you guys have up Mar- uh, marcel oh oh hi the infamous Lindsay Rhodes. Infa- that's a bad thing, you no, realize. It's not. Infamous means like famous for negative reasons. It's like notorious. Whatever. We don't need it's to no dwell. Well, that's not what you meant. That's okay. Like, that's Hi, not myself. what I meant. Lindsay Rhodes is amazing, awesome, one of my favorite people to work with. And my question for you is what's your favorite part of Super Bowl? 
my favorite part of Super Bowl. My favorite part of Super Bowl is the week and just running into people that you don't see all year long. And Marcel Reese. But I do see him all year long. I saw him last week. So I saw Marcel last week, him, too. Like, Did you? Yes, we were at was the stadium together. Oh, was it last week? See? Uh, it might have been two weeks ago. Just running together when it comes I to know. It might have been two weeks ago. It was in the, in the past 30 days, though. I think that's fair, well, right? But David, so, so here's the thing. Like, so I'll work with Marcel Reese all week, and we sit in a meeting, and then we do total access together. But there's no, like, downtime throughout the course of a regular day where you're just, like, sitting and talking and whatever. And my favorite part of Super Bowl is – I mean, Super Bowl is fun, and the game is fun, and all of it's great. But then it feels a little bit like summer camp meets high school reunion. <laughs> and it's people, a lot of people that you don't see all year long. And then people like Marcel that you do see, but you don't have time to just sit and decompress and, like, actually talk to and get to know. So I'm a big lobby bar at the end of the night. Just sit there, watch people walk through, and then talk to people that you don't get a chance to talk to. I, I mean, everyone could use a little Marcel Reese hang time in their yes. life. Yes. Everybody. It's good for the soul, no, man. It's back. good for the I soul. I know. Get out of here. <laughs> we'll see you later, bro. Yay, Marcel. Well, Marcel and Lindsay Red. Look at that. The beauty of Radio Row. Yay. Magic. My brother's going to be so proud of me because he's the biggest Raiders fan in the whole wide world, and he's going to be so happy that I did this. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.